KCAT 97.1 FM. KCAT Nation, NP Time, the Quarantine Diaries, coming to you. The first post Easter show, Peter. Happy Easter to you. Happy Easter, Ben. Weird Easter, right? Not oh. your normal Easter. Uh, watching the vigil on, uh, on 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 YouTube Live, I guess, it wasn't quite the same as being there. Uh, still a little bummed out when I, they started going past like the third reading. I realized <laughs> that uh, you know maybe for one of the only times ever, you could really not have an excuse to not have all seven readings. So so that kind of. Uh, but they actually stopped after four for some reason, so I, I got lucky. But I felt bad for even wanting less than three readings. But uh, what about you? What, did you watch it on TV, or, or what, how did you guys attend Easter Vigil? Well, we ended up uh, watching Mass in the morning uh, with our kids. But uh, the funny thing is that like 10, 10.30 or something, I was scrolling through Facebook and happened to see the post from my parish. And so I clicked on it. And, each vigil was still going on, and I felt kind of guilty that I could have been. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if they did all seven readings. You never know. I think that the quarantine diaries is brought to you by Bubbly, Bubbly Sparking Water. Uh, I had adopted Stir Water Enhancer as both uh, something I use and as a sponsor in lieu of carbonated water. But Lent is over, so I'm back on the sauce, and and that actually leads to one of my quarantine stories. So, uh, you know, I like Bubbly. Uh, but as you mentioned last time, you buy the the discount carbonated water, and I'm like you, right? So bubbly is very expensive, and I don't like to buy it. So they do stock it at work, which I haven't been to work in in four weeks now, right? Because we've been on the quarantine. So I decided to actually sneak into the office to get some orange bubbly for myself, right? And I feel like you know it, it didn't feel wrong because I work there; it's for me, right? And there was some in there. So I took the last three cans. Uh, but what was weird is this is the first time I had been to the office. Now, I've been to the parking lot several times because I go downtown Saturday morning to pick up breakfast. We're trying to frequent the uh, local restaurants. And, and, you know, to this point, downtown Victoria is just roving bands of homeless people. Uh, although I'm starting to see more signs of life. Like we now have added both roving bands of homeless people and kind of middle age in shape guy who likes to run. I saw a lot of those, right? So that's a sign that life is coming back, right? It's probably like the little grass poking up through the snow. So anyway, I decided to wander into the office. Kind of looks like this, right? It's uh, <laughs> abandoned and, you know, in, in like the weird kind of Chernobyl sort of way, right? Like, uh, you know, pens laid out on the desk, like someone had, uh, you know, abandoned them in a minute's notice. Uh, my desk, suspiciously, the picture of my wife and kid had fallen over. I thought was a little odd because no, there weren't any other pictures on anyone else's desks that had fallen over. So that alarmed me a little bit. But the, the long and short of it is, I did get the orange bubbly and was successful in bringing it back. And I'm drinking some now, actually. As a matter of fact, I uh, saved some for the, the pod here. So y'all hear that? Uh, yeah. Now, and that made me think have you been back to campus since the quarantine started? Um, I went really briefly, but before before the county quarantine, but after we had, after school had turned remote, but before like the school corn, like the, the county quarantine had actually hit. So it was legal, if only slightly sketchy. Um, but that was just to get a laptop, like loaded up with all the, all of my files and everything. Literally just the two IT guys on campus. And I know that you guys use Zoom for your classes. Are you a background guy? Are your students background guys? Do you judge students and the backgrounds they use? Oh, absolutely. Without a doubt. Um, I, I never use it. I just have the wall of my of my home office, which is a bedroom. Um, but my students use it pretty constantly. Uh, typically not. Mm, let's see. 25% of them use it as a random background because they don't want us to see their bedroom. And then the most of the ones who use it, it's just a random picture, something that totally flies over my head, but which is funny to everyone else. Or the the classic trick has been to take a picture of yourself and then have that as your Zoom background and then hope that if you're not there, your teacher thinks that you're still there. It doesn't work, but. So what is like the go-to troublemaker background? Some weird picture of something like, there's no like one thing. Okay. You can't, you can't really like put a limit to the like ingenuity of, 15 year olds. Yeah, another thing that happened to me 
in quarantine. So, so I think this doing this again, right? This uh, well, actually, before I jump into that, we actually have a special night, right? So, uh, Ben and P time legend, uh, the former Amy Hallis, now Miss Amy Young or Ms. Amy Young, uh, joining us both to crack wise and all the contestant in our beat eat game later on today. So, Amy, welcome. Uh, going to find uh, as we get into the uh, what are they doing now game. Uh, there are a lot of teachers and lawyers as part of our alumni base. Amy is a teacher. Uh, so as a virtual teacher, uh, are you using a tool that has a background? Like a Zoom or do you have just the boring old cameras and the dark looking apartments and so on? <laughs> We're pretty like over here yeah, uh, for a variety of reasons sticking with the Google Meets and keeping it real simple. So the kids are really, really basic about it. So there haven't been any, they can change like their icons or whatever. And the icons for the most part are either just their little names or or it's some, you know, image that I may or may not recognize. And like he was saying, probably goes over my head and is funny to other people and not me. And I'm okay with that. I can roll with that, whatever. It's not blatantly offensive. I don't really care. Um, but no, it's, it's we're doing okay. Yeah, I, I yeah. forsook using video camera a long time ago. I tried to dress up for the first week and now I've been in perma pajamas and sweatshirts for about three weeks and they just don't see me. They see an icon and I'm good with that. I can live with it. Yeah, no, that's the way to go. I, I, I am against dress up Zoom guy. I think one of the first with the quarantine diaries, there was, we were looking at, uh, we did a game called socks or no socks, right? TAC was posting a lot of the of their virtual classes, like they had just discovered the internet. It was pathetic. But we were looking through and kind of trying to figure out who was wearing socks and who wasn't wearing socks. And there was one guy that was wearing a suit and just universally disliked that guy. Total try hard move. So I am I am a hundred percent behind your idea of wearing you know comfortable clothes and just keeping the camera off. So unless you have a cool zoom background. Now uh, I will say as I've gotten back into the podcast, Peter, I have a confession to make. Uh, it really has wet my appetite to be heard, right? When my son screams, I always say, well, you've got a lot to say, right? And what I realized, I have a lot to say too, right? This is maybe not the proper, this is just one venue for me to do it. So when I woke up on Friday morning, I didn't have many meetings and I was scrolling Twitter and uh, someone said, even someone I follow, uh, it was some other person and someone liked their tweet. And they said, if you tweet me an interesting topic, I'll bring you on my podcast, right? So this is just catnip to me. Uh, I had to pitch an idea, so I, I've become kind of uh, I've become kind of anti-boomer, mm -hmm. and so I had this sort of idea about uh, I think the most important moment in life is the transition you make from uh, being a child with your and the child parent relationship to being kind of a friend to your parent relationship, and I think that how you navigate with that transition, both you and your parents, kind of determine whether you're a productive member of society, right? Now, there's a whole lot more to it, and this is a fun, like, laugh podcast, so we won't get into it then, but I thought this was interesting, right? And the person bought on, right? They were like, oh, I'm really interested in this. Uh, I'd like to do it more and maybe bring you on. So I thought I had it, right? I had made the sale. I'm going to be on this other podcast. My voice is going to be heard. But but then things start to go a little south, right? And then returned and said, well, you know what? I'm going to sleep on it, which is a little concerning, and then I started listening to the actual podcast because I didn't know who this person was, right? I just, I see something that I want. And I went after it without doing a lot of research. So I started listening to the podcast and a lot of stuff about breakups, uh, you know, kind of more of a, a, a woman oriented show, uh, maybe not like, you know, for my hard hitting anti boomer. And then I started noticing that it had been a couple of days and the person was posting pictures of their, their rabbit with uh, like little flower crowns on so I could tell that they were doing activity and they hadn't responded to whether they were going to have me on the podcast yet right and I didn't want to look too eager and be like hey what's going on can I be on the podcast but I really really wanted to be on the podcast and then I started to <laughs> that I kind of knew what was going on and, and I didn't recognize it at first because I've really had a good decade right so I've been with my wife nine years married eight dating nine the last three job interviews I've had, I've fortunately gotten the job, right? So I've been kind of insulated from a very special type of rejection, the kind of rejection that goes along with being dumped or not getting a job. 
And so I started to realize that that was what was going to happen, right? This person posting pictures of their rabbit with flower crowns, right? Completely unaware of my feelings. And I knew it was coming then. So slowly but sure, uh, I finally got an email one night. And it's like, you know what? I decided to go in a different direction with the podcast. So <laughs> Peter, I have to come clean to you. I'm sorry. I tried to run off with a different podcast and I'm coming back to you humbled and hoping that you'll take me back. I mean, we're, we're podcasting right now, man. That's good. So yeah. you could, I'll just, we can maybe edit that part out. So it looks a little less pathetic, but I, I had to tell you that <laughs> one of my quarantine experiences. And then the other one, this one, I'm a little more ashamed of. I, uh, there's no sports on, right? And obviously a big sports fan. So I'm trying to find other ways to amuse myself. And I really got hooked on the Harry Potter marathon this weekend. And, and that was perfectly fine. I was sitting there enjoying it, uh, being slightly judged by my wife who thinks Harry Potter is not that exciting. Uh, and she was talking to her mom and she, her mom, well, what's Ben doing now that there's no sports on? And she was like, well, he's currently watching the Harry Potter marathon. And normally if no one had talked about it, I would have felt just fine doing that. But when she said that, I was just filled with feelings of shame. <laughs> I just conjured up this image of, you know, I try to maintain a certain machismo for my in-laws, right? Because I'm already, you know, the kind of foreigner, right? The American, they're Canadians. So there's already a little bit of kind of pent-up hostility. I've said some maybe nasty things about the queen before, right? So there's a little bit of a certain American edge, right? And the, the idea of, you know, watching the Harry Potter marathon kind of conjures up this image of me maybe wearing a stupid uh, scarf, holding a wand, maybe a little pen you know, scar on my forehead. And I really, it just, it felt like I was caught doing something wrong. So I don't know how I'm going to get back my machismo. Maybe I will uh, rent a monster truck next time we go out there. But I feel very vulnerable and diminished in my in-laws' eyes. So those are my quarantine. Pete, Pete said earlier, man, you finally you got to lean into it. So the better question here is what house are you? Are you Gryffindor? You know, really... <laughs> Are you Slytherin? You feel a little mm -hmm. Slytherin-ish to me. I wouldn't tag you as a Hufflepuff, although maybe now your in-laws do. Not really sure. <laughs> well, I took a test online. Not this weekend. I, <laughs> this is making me dig the hole even worse. Uh, and it did put me in the oh. Slytherin. I have ordered the yeah. scarf. I'm very excited about uh, my embarking in the Slytherin. I think you're right. I'm a Hufflepuff. But uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe if I got really into Just, snakes, I could change their mind. Yeah. Yeah, that and you should just post workout videos of you doing push-ups and burpees wearing your Slytherin scarf. <laughs> Expelliarmus. Uh, yeah, so that's what you can say every time you push up. These are my quarantine experiences. I know we're all in the same boat, this trapped kind of TAC existence. So I think what I'm finding is I don't have the tools to survive. And so I started thinking about what you need to get through this, right? And it made me think baseball, right? Baseball, they have a concept of a five-tool player where it's someone who hits for power, can feel, can throw, can run, can hit for average. Uh, and, and I realized that these tools apply to all aspects of life. And then I got completely sidetracked and started thinking of to be a five-tool tac -er. And then how many are there? And so I came up with five categories. We're going to play a game. We call it tool or five-tool. The five tools of a TAC -er, uh, would be academics, right? And I'm not talking GPA. I'm talking more reputational, right? You know, d who's this person? Uh, they're smart because that's half the game there. It's just kind of people thinking you're smart. That'll get you a long way. Uh, administrative approval. Do they like you? Sure sign is you're a prefect. Sure sign you're not is you're in Letney's office like me all the time. Uh, excellence in sports slash music slash art. I found what I thought was a, a somewhat ambiguous character here, who is someone that is skating, so potentially performing. That's kind of a singing, acting motion, right? So I thought that was okay. I think it mostly is a speed skater. The definite factor of guys love them and gals love them. And I'm not talking about love them in like, uh, you know, hey, they're okay kind of way. I think it's gotta be if you're a guy, 60% of the guys would have a beer with you. If you're a gal, 60% of the girls would consider going on a date with you. Uh, vice versa, or, you know, if you're a guy that likes other guys, the same, whatever, you get the idea, right? There has to be a certain level of approval beyond, hey, I think that person's okay, right? And when you start drilling into this, it becomes a much harder 
thing to factor, right? So I was thinking about myself. Uh, academics, eh, not really, right? Uh, never really considered an elite academician. Uh, probably not even an average academician. So definitely not a academic tool, whatever you want to call it. Uh, not really a lot of administrative approval. I uh, kind of got called in a lot, not as much as like, uh, you know, your typical degenerate, but enough to not really be administratively approved. Uh, decent at sports, had some big Turkey Bowl moments, won a flag football championship, still remember it, still proud of it. Puff, puff, go team. Uh, and uh, guys like me, sure. I mean, we got Tom LaFave on in a few seconds to play the game, right? That was uh, something yeah. that you wouldn't do for someone you didn't love. I mean, maybe, I don't know. I didn't. Uh, Married to a TAC -er. I did date one for a while. So I feel like maybe, maybe 60%. I don't know. We'll see. So I, I'm considering myself maybe on a good day, a three tool player, uh, on a bad day, a two tool player. So this is the idea. Peter, let's let's assess you. Looking at the five pillars of TAC tools, where would you put yourself? Um, probably two tools. I think I was had a decent reputation in terms of academic firepower. Administrative approval was under the radar for a long time until I wasn't. Um, <laughs> yeah, definitely not the star there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So nope, no tool there. Uh, I was, I did not excel in any sort of talent or sports or music or art. Um, I think I got along pretty well with the guys, and I got. I don't know. The gal. It's hard to know. Uh, I'd say give myself two and a half stars. There we go. I'll settle that. Amy, what would you put your star metric here? Oh, goodness. Let's see. Let's let the self-denigration begin. Um, academics, probably decent. I'll give myself a I'll give myself a star for academics. Uh, probably flew under the so flying under the radar is good then for administrative approval, or do they have to like you? Because I don't I think, think they knew the I was there. The reputation of being uh, the school feminist. So I, that would not yeah. be. Uh, <laughs> yeah. When you were mentioned several times on the, the Ben and P time morning show, which probably automatically puts you in ill repute. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Sorry. You might have taken that star away yeah, from that's me. That's fine. That's fine. I don't need it. It's fine. Um, excellence <laughs> in a sports and uh, I don't think I attended a single sports match the entire four years I was there. I heard the music and play it. I'm not our So we're at okay. one star. Um, I think I got along with people, although if you're going to call me a feminist, I might get the gals lover, but the guys don't. So it's possible I'm a two-ish star. I'll go with it. We'll toss her a guy to star. Guys. Can you co-sign on that? I'll toss her a, a guy star. I feel like at least 60% yeah. of the guys would take you on a date. Sure. Why not? Yeah. I mean, people like the challenge of the man-hater, right? That's, this is something that people get intrigued. <laughs> Man, woo! I was on the win-a-date. I was on the win-a-date, and I and was one, so I went on a date. Yeah, that's, yeah it's star. That's proof. So it, it's really, it starts to break down when you, when you look at people, right? So I did kind of a, a long thought about who we went to school with and, and picking people from our time and trying to find out who I thought was a five tool player. Uh, I only came up with two and, and I think one of them I'm going to have to defend pretty hard. So I think Kyle Washit from my class was a five tool TAC. Now, again, I, I want to clarify what this is. Is this something to envy? No. Is this something you want to be? Probably not. Is this someone you would hang out with? Definitely not, right? But so this, this is not uh, uh, this is not really a badge of honor. This is more of an academic assessment. So Kyle Wash, when you think about it, certainly respected in the classroom. Hold on, one conversation. Administrative approval, prefect, right? Excellence in sports, music, and art. Kind of. Uh, here's the thing: starting linebacker in the Turkey Bowl three years in a row. Now, and people don't realize this because. He was in my class, but freshman year, he was actually kind of jacked, right? He was like a big Wyoming strong boy. And what happened, this was really an incredible phenomenon. I don't know if you guys remember, uh, she was a, a girl in my mm -hmm. gal, uh, yeah. but she, she was there and she was a vegan and she had lived in Europe. So she had this, she was very exotic, right? And, and I think it really smitten a lot of guys in my class and like, Second semester freshman year, a lot of people were becoming vegan. And I think it was mostly to impress <laughs> Murin. And Kyle was one of those. So he became substantially smaller for the rest of his time there. Then I think he became an Orthodox uh, type of Orthodox that doesn't eat meat a whole lot. So he maintained sort of a scrawny physique. So I know that this might sound doubtful, but let me assure you, freshman year, he was a stud linebacker. He maintained that position for the next few years. And he also won trivial quadrivial pursuit. So I feel like. That's enough of a resume to get slash arts slash music star. Think about it. 
Uh, guys love him. I didn't like him, but I think a lot of people did. Girls love him. He had a whole bunch of girlfriends when he was there. He even dated two people in the same room at different times. But still, that's pretty, uh, pretty remarkable, right? That's a star-worthy thing. Uh, married to a TAC here. So I think it's a pretty, pretty unattackable five-star resume. Uh, what do you, what say you? I mean, you're saying that his excellence in sports is based on a first impression of him when he was 18, which, I mean, the five tools have to, like, maintain. You have to keep them up, and it has to be something that's consistent throughout your career. If we're going to judge someone based on what they were at TAC, then it doesn't make any sense to just only take into account the first three months. And my my recollections of him are, yeah, quite scrawny. Uh, <laughs> quite. No, no, no particular excellence in in sporting events and certainly not in music or art. So, I mean, if we're really going to toss out the first ever Ben and B-Time five-tool rating, Kyle Washington? I mean, are you sure? You might have swung me by describing him as quite scrawny. That That is... That is pretty harsh, right? It's like, that'd be like, you're quite a Harry Potter fan. Like, it just has a little extra sting to it, right? It's not like you're a Harry Potter fan. You're quite Hufflepuff. Uh, I don't know. That really, you might have won me over just with your with your adjective there. Uh, Amy, do you even remember who Kyle Washington is? <laughs> is he, that would be our big <laughs> test of, uh, of his gloriousness. The name was familiar. The name was familiar. And after a brief Facebook stockage, which I just uh, performed, um, I see him and I remember him. Uh, he's got the baby blues. He's actually got a ball cap on in terms of uh, to uh, counter Pete's point that it's got to have some longevity yeah. with the sports. He's currently doing something sporty and and yeah, a professor at Wyoming Catholic College. So he's a professor. He plays sports. Oh, this is yeah. 12 years, 13 years beyond college, which is pretty, uh, yeah, it's pretty strong. I don't know. I'm kind of favoring it. He might be five, right. might be a five star. We, we have to determine, we have to determine the time period, right? Is this the first three months of freshman year, as Ben says, is this from when you matriculated until now, as Amy is suggesting? Because that makes a big difference. I, I think uh, the life now is a reflection of fundamentals laid down in the college years. So I don't <laughs> know if you can discount that. You wouldn't take off from being a, a manly sports guy only to pick it up after college, right? So I think that it, it that what what we are seeing now with the ball cap and the riding horses in Wyoming. It's just a continuation of what is a track record of athletic excellence. I don't know. My Googling leads me to a with a cowboy hat and a bolo tie. So <laughs> a bolo tie is not an indication of athletic excellence. <laughs> As befits Wyoming Catholic. Okay, so I think we're gonna take this on a protest. He's a, yes. He has a, a preliminary star. We will review it with a full tribunal at a later date. But in the interest of time. The other five-star person I'm going to throw out there, and people are going to accuse me of prejudice because she is my sister-in-law, but uh, Maria Pakalik, now Maria Almeida. Now, in my defense, the last thing I said to my little brother before I left was don't date Pakalik, which he then quickly disobeyed <laughs> me and then, and then married her. So, But I'm, I'm good with that now. But I want to toss that out there because I think that that shows how unbiased I am in this assessment. But obviously, a very well-respected academician. Uh, I don't think she ever got in trouble. Wasn't like a, a big drinker or anything like that. So administrative approval, not not a prefect, but uh, you know, certainly not someone that was a subversive. Uh, very good in sports. The, the, we remember the Maria Pakalik massacre of her freshman year when uh, at the Chick Kick she destroyed everybody. Uh, my last memory of that is Maria Maline crawling off the field in injured agony at the, uh, the feet of the mighty Maria Pakalik. So excellence in sports for sure. A uh, guy's lover, sure, sure. She's popular. Gals lover. I don't know. I think I think they do. Amy, do you remember Maria Pakalik? You know what's funny about? I made my own list of the five tool player, and she was on it. Oh, <laughs> completely independent. Completely independently. You said nothing to me, and she was absolutely. So I have nothing to say. But yeah, absolutely, she's brain. awesome. No, I'm not gonna hit on her. <laughs> well, there we go. <laughs> my little brother <laughs> would appreciate that. Uh, all right, so those yeah, he lives five. relatively near me. Right? Come kill me. Uh, Amy, I think you said you have some five tool people. So let's let's tear apart your list. Who you got? I feel like we, uh, we I feel like we had a fair showing of the degree of athleticism you're talking about, but you 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 change the standards slightly with adding in sports or adding in music and art. So that's a little different. But Maria was definitely my girl. Um, I thought that Blaze Scott though could definitely hold her own if we're going for another like female candidate for the five tool player. Um, she was, you know 
pretty badass on a multiple multiple ways. You know, sharp in class and could hold her own on the field and um, all around really sweet girl. So plays I would throw out there. Um, Steve Zapetta. So one objection to, to Blaze. Uh, so uh, as legend has it, so you may remember, and I, I say it because I'm afraid he can kill me. But uh, uh, Ben Coglin, you guys remember him? At one point, had a. a, a a thing for blaze and, and as legend had it he walked from santa paula to arizona to see her and ask her out and was then rejected and so i can't get behind somebody that would <laughs> soul like that i mean amy living in the desert you knew you know what 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 uh what perilous terrain this to, to show his unrequited and to be crushed like that i can't uh, give my seal of approval. So I know I'm just you know, know one half of one percent. Simplifying but... the guys love him. Oh come on, <laughs> simplifying guys love guys love her to the point that they put their their health at hazard. But beyond that, <laughs> when did when did he not put it, his health at hazard? When did he not do things that were completely mm. out of well, control well. and completely bucking all him. standards? Like really, can you judge? Can you judge her based on his behavior here? Because I think that. If someone's a little bit off the rocker, it would go more in his court than her, and I would probably say no too. God bless him. Pretty cold. But no, her fault. He decided to walk. He could have driven. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I just I want to rally my coalition of guys and not co-sign on that because that's just it's just too cold. If we allow that to stand and give her a fifth star, we may submit to womankind, and I cannot support. <laughs> Uh, I would, what, however you want to play yeah. that. Peter, you can be the time breaker. <laughs> well, um, I think that what Amy said in terms of what you just said is entirely accurate. And that's only a, um, just a sign that guys loved her. But um, my issue is more that in terms of the academic and administrative approval, I felt that she flew so far into the radar um, and just did not have a particularly high reputation. So I wouldn't <laughs> other three tools at all. Um, but if we're a five tool player, the one who just knocked it out of the park in every aspect of TAC life, she was too quiet. She was too, I don't, I don't think she had it. Ooh, you're tightening up your Gryffindor scarf and you are casting judgment. I love this. <laughs> So th there are some holes in that. It's a worthy submission, but there are some holes. Who else is on? She said Steve Zapata. Yeah, so uh, definitely, I think that um, I feel like Steve definitely held his own in class. Um, and, uh, you know, I, in terms of um, being kind of just a really mellow, sweet guy, I think guys and girls both got along really, really well with him. Never crossed any lines in terms of, you know, administrative approval. So, yeah. Going to Mexico. Or Chill, awesome, sweet guy. So I'd, I'd go with it. Yeah, and I remember all the big moments Steve had in the Turkey Bowl and on the basketball court said no one ever. So I don't know about the uh, the sports star. Uh, I feel like we'd have to see his uh, tape to really catch us on that. I, you know, he was only a freshman when I was there, so he had three after I left to, to establish himself. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't remember any big moments for Steve Zapata. In fact, he was on my championship winning flag football team. I may have mentioned that earlier. And uh, uh, did really contribute a whole lot so yeah. well one of the one of the aspects of the five tool player is that they have to be minimally good at all five tools but several of them have to really stand out for you to take notice and to say like this is a five tool player and with steve like they were all just solidly above average and nothing like sparked out and really made you think like this is someone exceptional all right, so this one's a little foggier, a little harder to attack than Blaze. I think we'll have to take this one under to the tribunal, but uh, worthy nomination, more discussion needed. Uh, who else is on the list? Well, I have, I mean, what seems to be an obvious submission, uh, which is Evan Dunkel. Um, if you think about, you're laughing, Ben, but I mean, if you think about it, like, I mean, just in terms of academics, he had a sterling reputation as a, as a leader and a speaker and someone who engaged the class. Uh, he never did anything that made anyone in the administration mad at him and, and was generally a good citizen. Uh, he was excellent in 
sports and music and art. And uh, I just loved music and art. So, so I workshopped this idea in a group text. And, and I feel even ashamed to admit this because I'm admitting to being on a group test, text with Evan Uncle. Uh, and he did actually submit himself five, five tool candidate, right? <laughs> Uh, but two, right. two major issues, right? So I asked him what was his athletic qualifications? Like what was the highest level of ac athletic success he had at school? And he mentioned that at one point he had won a, a, a Frisbee championship. <laughs> and, you know, far be it for me to, uh, to you know, diminish Frisbee. Uh, if I remember correctly, uh, Rodolph was an elite Frisbee player. So that's a knock. Also, when it comes to administrative approval, uh, Evan likes to share a picture of him and, and who is now President McLean dressed up in like weird like rapper attire. And I think he thinks it's a very funny picture, but I think it's like the worst picture in the world, right? I think to me that picture like disqualifies McLean from being president. I was a team Coughlin guy back when they made the decision. So I, I feel like he has potential blackmail of the university president, and, and that is not someone that would be held in high administrative approval, unless, of course, it's you know via blackmail, right? So I, I don't know. I feel like there's two whole. I would rate him more as a three star, and I'm not even sure about the the, the gal power there. Amy, you, you're you're a gal. You're our resident woman expert. Uh, Evan Dunkel, sixty percent of the gals like him. Uh, the final, uh, yeah, no. Yeah, no, sweet guy, sweet guy, sweet guy. Um, up to you. <laughs> what kind of a lure are we talking about? We <laughs> you're sitting out front of the coffee, right? Evan Dunkel comes up to you, glistening with sweat, holding a frisbee. He says, Hey, Amy, you want to go into town and get tacos? What are you saying? <laughs> I throw him a towel direction probably <laughs> <laughs> i think we might have a two star on our hands here <laughs> pass the test oh she got p time all right uh my other and i think this is really i mean this is my ace in the hole which is uh teresa nelson the formerly teresa o'reilly you know just widely widely recognized as an excellent contributor in class um helped perhaps by Family connections to be uh, approved by the administration. Uh, an excellent athlete. Guys loved her. Gals loved her. Really. <laughs> you really sounded like, it was like you were coming I, off into I, dream. Like, well, I mean, she, the perfect TAC here, like the perfect prospect. So I have, for many years, stood up for TO, right? Uh, I have always referred to her as the undisputed of that class. But playing volleyball at TAC, I rose to the level of being a captain. Would always try to administer well let me walk you through the the, the strategies i administer as a captain over the years to amend my strategy right to what i called the bros and beauties strategy right where i would get my friends and then try to get beautiful people to play with us it's not the most uh, refined method i admit but i was younger right uh, younger more immature than, <laughs> but anyway so i never really executed that strategy well my junior year i got a lot of my bros and very few beauties and the one beauty i got wound up quitting because she didn't like it uh, and that team was more successful. That's not the point. The point is senior year, I did the magnum opus, right? Got a bunch of my friends and Teresa O'Reilly on the team, right? The beautiful Teresa O'Reilly. And not only that, but she had, was dating Mike Grimm, who was the undisputed best volleyball player on campus. Not to, I can tell you for a fact, Teresa O'Reilly was terrible in volleyball. <laughs> so terrible, in fact, that it was unattractive. So I came into the season really excited to have her on my team. And I was so horrified by her performance that she I mean, she may as well have been like a 20-foot troll. It was just completely unappealing, flailing, missing balls, serving into the net. And to make matters worse, right, when I was standing there just completely, uh, uh, probably worn on my face, just the total shock and dismay, she said, maybe we should as a team, right, <laughs> which is also a very unappealing suggestion for intramural volleyball. So I – can never, ever, in no way, shape, or form, sign off on her fifth star. Well, I mean, Does anyone have any objections to that story of, of pain and woe? I go with a solid four stars. Solid four stars. <laughs> guys <laughs> loved her. Girls wanted to be her. Yeah. No. I think everything else would be fairly undisputed. I think you guys are just afraid of making me cry if you push too hard on that that, that, <laughs> uh, that sports star. It, it's very emotional for me. 
I need a moment to collect myself here. Uh, do we have any other five star candidates? There really aren't a whole lot of them. And really, what uh, this caused me to realize is when you think back to the past, that's no indication of what someone's going to be in the future, right? I was maybe a two star, three star kind of person. And now look at me, right? Tech <laughs> executive, wife in the dream, quarantined in a foreign country. I've got it all, right? So let's not focus on what people have done in the past. Let's focus on what they're going to do in the future by playing a game that I'd like to call, how do they pay the student loans? So let me walk <laughs> you through this. Uh, this is heat segment. We actually have, <laughs> here's how this game works, right? I show you a picture of them back in college. Now, I'm not going to say these are good hints. In fact, many of them are bad <laughs> hints. Some of them are a painfully obvious, where I'm clearly trying to wedge a hint into a thought. Uh, <laughs> but in this case, what, what I would see here is, this is you know, Mr. Peter Turrentine. Uh, and looking at him from his college photo, you'd say he's hippie looking. Uh, he has deep wine country connections, right? So you would think maybe that he would end up being, uh, let's say, a legal dealer sharing Blake Lively as a girlfriend with his violent ex-soldier buddy, right? As in the movie Savages, Oliver Stone. No one saw it. Don't expect you to know what it is. But that's what you'd think, right? Uh, you'd be uh, Peter Turrentine, mathematics teacher. Uh, not, uh, not as exciting as one might have thought. But that's the idea. This week's version of Beat Pete. Two warriors enter. One leaves. Amy Young, Peter Turrentine. Let's play Beat Pete. All right. Our first kid. Donald Tanner, he often sm spoke of sin in church. The Cathedral of Notre Dame burned down. Both smoking and wanting to burn a place down are common thoughts in his job. <laughs> so Amy, as our guest, you can go first. What do you think Connell Tanner does? Goodness, that's a tough one. Um, now, legally you know, or you, illegally? You, I mean, where, where are we going with this? Man, <laughs> it, was exactly. a, it was a tough Just, night. I don't even know where to go with that one. Um, so the closest it depends. Like if you were to throw out chemist and he happens to be like, I'll give you points. If you nail it perfectly, you get 10 points. If you get close, I'll award a variety of points. But you have to take a stab at it. Yeah, I feel like it would be pretty cutthroat. I see him rising up the corporate ladder. Is he CEO? Is he part of a business structure of some kind? Is he running a business of some nature? I'm being as vague as I can here. Uh, we're going to go, go with, with businessman. Businessman, let's do it. All right, nice and vague. Peter, what say you? So I have legitimately thought of Connell multiple times in the past months with in connection to Notre Dame bringing down. Because he probably did it. So I'm going to say, I think he's probably a firefighter. So he's smoking in, in a different kind of church as a fifth grade lead. Uh, wow. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I can award any points to any of you. <laughs> <So> <laughs> we had a firefighter. And we had a, uh, a businessman, uh, both of which I, I suppose could come to school as part of a parent, what do they do kind of day. Uh, but I think that the kids would be more excited to see a firefighter. So I'm going to award Peter one point <laughs> out of 10. So it's not an insurmountable lead. All right, that was a rough start. Let's see if we can go on something else. Uh, the lovely Katie Gaffney, uh, very theatrical. In fact, she was once the lead in the Grapes of Wrath play. She was the principal maker of a conspiracy. I call it the Katie Gaffney conspiracy. It seemed like every guy, sophomore class and below, post-college plans were to move to Colorado Springs. Why Colorado Springs, would you ask? Well, Katie Gaffney happened to be from Colorado Springs. She's a Colorado gal, but she doesn't live there anymore. What does Katie Gaffney do? I'm going to say that she is a winemaker in Central California. All right. Awfully specific guess. Uh, Amy, what say you? You can guess the same thing if you wanted to as well. Sir, and so Pete, what happens when you know the answer? And so does Pete. Really, how does how does the beating happen? At this point? <laughs> I just get you both get maximum points. What do you say? Uh, winemaker. She's a winemaker. I mean, look at I mean, we're going with the grapes of wrath. Hint or anti hint. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the hints are not wildly subtle. Uh, assistant winemaker. Uh, that would have been full points, but I'll give you nine points to each of them. So. Nine points each, then the current score of Peter T, Amy nine. All right, let's take a, for you guys for both staying in touch with the lovely Katie Gaffney. I think she's engaged now. How exciting is that? Uh, let's move on to someone else that you probably have certainly not kept tabs on. 
one Michael Lawless, <laughs> an incredible soccer player. Not much any power as super computer, but a clean living guy. I don't even think I ever saw him have a cup of Java, a glass of alcohol. Bro, he never did any of that stuff. Clean living guy. What does Michael Lawless do? We'll go with the play off his name. We're going to say lawyer. Straight, straight arrow. One of the safest TAC guesses ever. Teacher or lawyer is almost a sure mm -hmm. bet. Peter, what do you say? I'm going to say he's a small business owner. <laughs> you have to give us the nature of his business. Oh, um, <laughs> there's, there's so many options. Um, probably supply chain. He probably is a delivers uh, hardware goods to hardware stores. Wow. Incredibly big to incredibly specific. Yeah. So again, th this is not going the way I expected. And I <laughs> was just like really in your face. He is, a, I don't even really understand what he does. He is some sort <laughs> of computer developer, right? So, so uh, power supercomputer, never saw him drink a cup of Java. Huh? Yeah. Anyway, so uh, mm -hmm. I think this is hard to score. Uh, I mean, do with, with supply chain logistics. So I, I mean, yeah. digitally. Uh, Amy said he was a lawyer state, which employs a lot of lawyers. So I'm going to uh, award three points to Amy. Indirectly related? Yeah, no. it's, it's not, not as close to the pin as I would like, but this might be how this game goes. So uh, right now the current score is Amy 12, Peter 10. And we can move on to our next one. The, the woman formerly known as Mary Rose Malloy, now Mary Rose Hellerman. She married a Jewish politician, so she must like numbers. She's a Lone Star gal, and she was not in college, which is a little bit of a buzzkill. What does Mary Rose Malloy do? Um, I'm going to say she's an accountant. She's an accountant for, no, let's say she's an accountant for a distillery. All right. An accountant for <laughs> Ooh, a Lone Star gal indicates, again, where these tents are going, indicates some kind of country kind of girl, uh, trod her own path, wore the cape, married a smart guy teacher i don't know yin to his yang who knows all right so it's all in the hints mathematician that might be someone who's an accountant lone star beer alcohol known to sport a cape in college is a little bit of a buzz kill which means she is an accountant for buzz balls <laughs> that's a 10 pointer peter 10 points for peter zero points for amy 20 to 12 is the current score so that was tough right. i think peter might have known that one that uh wasn't totally fair, but Maybe. let's get one that's a little bit different. Joel Morehouse, hence, Ooh. played the organ in college, sported just the, the highest shorts I've ever seen in my life, <laughs> it's scarring me to this day. Uh, but outside of when he was jogging, jogging uh, was a generally fashionable fella. So what does Joel Morehouse do? I love this picture, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> in my soul, incredible picture. Fierce, man. All right, so I think uh, Amy goes first um, on this. Choir director. So what say you? I'm going to say he's the organ player for whatever Major League Soccer stadium, like a franchise is closest to the East Coast. All right. Both really good guesses because he happens to be the director of music and organist at St. Thomas. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, both of you got big pieces of this. Where You lost me a little bit organ. here was... Oregon a baseball team on the no, just, East Coast. So what I'm going to do, I will give Amy eight, and Peter, I'll give you seven points. Okay. All right. So 27 to 20 going into the last person. So we'll make this a double. All right. <laughs> the lovely Maggie Tuttle. Family mm. operated an incredibly successful electric Silicon Valley. She broke her wrist in a powder puff game, frequented the company of South Pins, and she's one of the nicest people with really two deaths. But anyway, what does Matt? These clues are terrible. Oh, yes. Um, she's never had a cup of Java. Don't you understand? <laughs> <laughs> the computer broke. Oh, that, I mean, that was better, but these are terrible. Like, how is that powder puff? Um, I'm going to say that Some she is designed to throw you off. That's for sure. There's actually two more. That's so this not, is not a double. This is just a normal. Okay. She is a Mary Kay sales saleswoman. Oh, God. <laughs> Welcome to 1950. Oh, My God. <laughs> <laughs> she makes sure the pot roast is in the oven when her husband gets home. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens. 
I had like you barefoot? Of... What are you talking about? <laughs> no. It's a, it's a respectable second job, okay? Gosh. Oh, man. All right. Well, I feel like you maybe owe Maggie an apology. Uh, Amy, what do you say? <laughs> Your hints are terrible. Uh, what about this made you think let's it was say that she is, uh, yeah, that is a complete sidebar, completely off the beaten path there. Um, Silicon Valley. So let's go with some kind of tech industry job with a company that bases itself out of frequenting the company of South Africans bases itself out of foreign countries. So tech, tech industry, tech job uh, with international connections. All right. Point Amy, she is creating and celebrating customer success at LinkedIn. That is a 10 pointer for Amy. Now, now you know, it's the exact job. We'll go nine points, nine points for Amy, no points for Peter. All right, coming into the Mary Kate, coming into the final one for grabs. Brian Murphy. Oh, he once got into a fight with Primo over a harmless pasta primavera comment. The trivium kid, you all know what that means. <laughs> he is married to a gal from North Dakota. And then the question is, what is there to do in North Dakota? There's only one thing, and that's what he does. What does Brian Murphy do? Mm. Rancher. <laughs> Shows you how well I kept in touch with him. It's terrible. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, what, what's you? This is a chance to win the whole game, Peter. This is it. I've never won. Uh, I'm going to say he's a seventh grade teacher. Oh, man. I don't know what to do. He's a geologist. Of constant, of <laughs> oil, right? A lot of oil out there. Um, uh, I, mean, I mean, it has to do with the land than seventh grade teacher uh, yeah so here's the thing yeah. i think uh, even though a rancher is not in the oil business <laughs> certainly is more outside than a seventh grade teacher although i've never actually been to north dakota they may not actually i mean I'm, it's very cold so i'd assume the classrooms are inside they didn't have a very robust nature program uh but i think we have to give amy a point for this so one point amy which means the final score is amy 30 peter 27 amy congratulations <laughs> you have successfully beat pete Yay. Yeah, that's right. There's no prize. <laughs> it's super exciting. My night uh, is made. Well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you don't come on here to lose, right? Well, we've come to the end of another week. Uh, the ad campaign to people who love Korean cuisine was wildly successful. It, it reached over a thousand people. It translated into <laughs> over 300 views of our video, some of which actually went deep into it. So we really <laughs> resonated with the Korean cuisine people. Uh, Nicole Dunn was well, commenting on the video, so we also were getting a hold yeah. of the TAC people. So really Nelson an incredible success. I know, Matt Nelson liked our page, Frank Osborne followed us on YouTube. So really the most successful episode probably ever, uh, ever, ever, ever of Ben and Pete and the Quarantine Diaries. Uh, so I think it's whet my appetite for more targeted marketing. Based on our discussion today, I think we should target people that work in the North Dakota oil field. But what do you think? Any suggestions on targeted marketing this week? Yeah. North Dakota, uh, you could generally just Midwest dreary jobs. Probably, I'll I don't see, know. I'll see. Search for. Maybe I should also target Mary K. Ref. She seemed to have a good rapport with them. Oh, yeah. I'll send them to your house when they want to sell us. So them. the news will travel. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. They're walking around. They may as well listen to the no way. All right. Well, thank you, Amy, for joining us. We love to have I'm glad that you forgot about all the nasty things we said about you. And now, take 48.